Welcome back to the Spectra Creative Channel with me, your host, Scott Toy Guru Nightlick. And today we're talking about words. Well, not just any words. We're going to talk about different words that are thrown around in the toy making process and the toy collecting process. It's kind of a one stop shop. So if you're just someone starting out collecting toys or purchasing toys, or you've already got a huge collection and you just want to know what things mean. Well, whether you're collecting plastic toys, you're collecting plush toys, or you're collecting little tiny glass miniatures, a lot of the terms are, well, the same. So let's jump in. The first one I want to talk about is called paint ops. So paint ops is an industry term. A lot of collectors and toy fans will refer to this as deco or deco hits. And this does get thrown around a bit in the toy industry as well, as far as deco. But when you're referring to the technical process, it's called a paint op or paint operation. Essentially, whether this is spraying toys before you paint the details, meaning the, uh, the main plastic color that gets sprayed on other than what it's molded in, or if you're talking about individual details, which are done with a paintbrush. Every action figure, every doll, they're pretty much hand-painted. Most toys start out as blanks without any detail on them, and then someone has to come along and paint them by hand. There are other ways of decorating by stickers or tampo printing, but if you see something painted, it's more than likely done by hand, and it's a paint op. And honestly, these people are artists. They really are the people that are doing this. So uh, yeah, you're getting a hand-painted action figure every time you buy a $20 figure. All right, next up, POA, which stands for Points of Articulation. This is actually a bit more of a collector term than an industry term. But again, if you're just starting out collecting and you see this thrown around, what you're looking at here is a Spider-Man action figure that has a lot of POA. In fact, he's called a super articulated figure, or SA. So he has something like, you know, 30 different points of articulation, be it a knee joint or an elbow joint or a neck turn. You'll see even blank figures sold to collectors that are called super articulated. And articulation can be done in lots of different ways. Ball and socket, ball joints, ball and T-crotch, ball and socket, ball hinge, double hinge, triple hinge, quadruple hinge. Well, only really snake toys have that. But there are lots of different ways to do articulation, but it's all called P, points of articulation, POA. One of the most common is 5 POA, which basically means legs, arms, and neck. This is what a lot of vintage toys in the 80s had, like the Star Wars toys we grew up with. So they would be referred to as 5 POA figures because they have 5 points of articulation. So that's what that means. All right, next up, soft goods. Soft goods is an industry term for any time that cloth is used on a toy, whether this is done as a cape or a hood or a dress or an entire outfit like Mego figures. Whenever you're not dealing with plastic and you're dealing with cloth, it's referred to as adding soft goods to the figure. Sometimes a figure can be made of plastic but can have a soft goods accessory like a cape, like these Batman figures. Other time, plastic Batman figures are done with a plastic cape, so this just has no soft goods. This is a completely plastic figure with a plastic cape. Having a cape does not mean it's soft goods. It has to actually be made of fabric to be considered soft goods. An interesting example, this Doctor Doom figure, which is a fan custom, they removed the plastic outfit and the plastic cape from the figure, and added their own soft goods because this was the particular look that this customizer wanted. Another interesting example with Dr. Doom, this recent classic Doom that was released by Hasbro on a vintage card back, while it has a plastic skirt or plastic tunic and a plastic cape, there is a soft goods necklace, soft goods, I don't know what you would call it, the, the dark green thing around his neck, whatever you want to call that, that is made of fabric. So he has some soft goods. All right, tooling. This one comes up a lot. Tooling is the mold that toys are made from. It's the giant metal iron, well, I mean, it's a mold. It's like, like the Play-Doh molds we used to have as kids. And 
they need to be very, very sturdy because they have hot molten plastic poured into them in order to make the shape of whatever toy. Whether it's a doll or an action figure or a car, almost all plastic toys are created from tooling. And there's different types of tooling, but no matter what you're doing, you're going to get little plastic characters that come out like this and then often need to be separated from the plastic, uh, I guess, you know, if you will, forks that keep them together in the mold. Now, tooling is expensive. It can be as expensive as a luxury car, anywhere from twenty dollars to $100,000. So there's two kinds of figures. There's fully tooled, like Beast there in the front, and there's partial tools, like Forge and Wolverine in the back. Fully tooled basically means every part is new. Partially tooled means you're using some existing tool parts with some new tool parts, like unique heads or unique arms. And that's the difference between a fully tooled figure and a partially tooled figure. Partially tooled figures obviously cost way less to make because you don't have to tool as much. All right, next up, SRP. This one you may be familiar with even if you're not a toy buyer because it applies to everything. SRP is suggested retail price. So that comes from the manufacturer and they tell the retailer, or rather the retailer's sales rep, how much the toy or item should sell for. It's basically the toy they recommend you sell it for. Now some retailers can discount toys, but they often have to sign agreements not to discount it beyond a certain bottom, unless of course they're a discount channel. This is also known as MSRP, which is Manufacturer Suggested Retail Price. MSRP and SRP are the exact same thing. One just has an M in front of it because, you know, M. Dump bin. Dump bin, as far as a retail item, is a freestanding, usually either cardboard or metal large cage without a top on it, in which lots of product can be put in and customers can take it right out of the bin. It's not something merched on a planogram or on a wall with pegs. You can, you'll see this everywhere in retail, from food to clothing. Uh, all sorts of items are put into what are called dump bins. But in particular in the toy industry, you'll usually see these in the middle of what's called the runway in a uh, retail store like Target or Walmart, and usually they have things like balls or giant stuffed animals or often, you know, expensive Christmas gifts that might, you know, need extra placement. It's really a way of maximizing retail placement, especially for large items. All right, a slug or a slug figure. So I'm not talking about something like this that's, you know, a little disgusting creature. I'm talking about, well... This, it comes from this, it comes from bullets, which were called slugs, which basically means a non-articulated figure, a little character, whatever it is, that is literally just one piece, no articulation at all. And slug figures can be collector figures, can be highly detailed. As long as they don't have articulation, they are slug figures, although I think that Hellboy might have an articulated wrist. You can even have slug figures of slugs. So, you know, this is a double slug figure, if you will. All right, a refresh. So a refresh is an industry term. A lot of collectors call them variants, but it's when you have a main character, like He-Man or Spider-Man or Batman, and you want to do a new version of that character with a new action feature or a new design. So this version of He-Man, the battle armor He-Man, is a refresh of the original He-Man. It's taking the same character and adding a new feature. Thunder Punch He-Man is a refresh of He-Man. It's, again, same main character, but now a new way to play with him or a, you know, a new feature. This is different from a deco update. So a deco update versus a refresh. Refresh requires a brand new toy and usually new tooling to accommodate the action feature. A deco refresh is when you're just taking an existing tool, something that's already been tooled up and already sold usually, and just painting it in a different color, straight up. And you can often get a lot of mileage out of that, especially for collector and kid lines, where you can make a figure look very different just with different shades of paint. So all of these Batman, you know, I think the one on the right might have a different head, but uh, they're all the basic same body with new paint. Kit bashing. 
All right, so kit bashing, while it comes up in the collector hobby a lot as something people do when they want to change a figure, it is actually something in the industry as well. So sometimes you'll take an existing figure, like this uh, James Kirk figure from Star Trek Generations, and they'll take the body of this figure and then swap it out with a head of a different figure, already tooled. So kit bashing only applies when it's no tooling involved. So this Picard tapestry figure took an existing Picard head, put it on an existing Kirk body, and then just repackaged it as a new figure. It's a kit bash. One part from one figure, one part from another. An example that's not a kit bash is in the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves line, a new head was still required even though Robin Hood used the body of an existing figure. But because a new head was needed, tooling was involved. So this is not a true kit bash. It's just a reuse with new tooling. Versus the Sheriff of Nottingham used all existing parts. New head, same, or I'm sorry, reused head, reused body, reused arms, just from different characters, different figures, but there was no tooling. So this is a kit bashed figure. All existing parts reorganized to make a new character. All right. Next up is a shelf talker, specifically a retail shelf talker. So if we're going to go uh, by the book, if you will, as Spock said in Wrath of Khan, a shelf talker is really any signage at retail that communicates to a customer features, benefits, price, basically anything that's on a shelf that's communicating to the, re you know, the, to the consumer. In the toy industry, shelf talkers, though, have a different meaning. They're usually interactive, and they involve either video or audio displays that are in toy aisles in order to show off features of a toy. So if it has audio, it has video, it makes sound, that is what the toy industry refers to as a shelf talker. All right, a PDQ display. So this is something you'll often see on registers or on shelves, it's essentially an open tray, open box with no top that displays product that you can pull right out. Again, not having product on a peg. It can be product that is designed to fit a specific number. So this would be, you know, kind of a MasterCard and they have an exact number of mini boxes in this PDQ. Or it can just be an open PDQ that has, you know, ran, you know things in it as many as it will fit. It's essentially a shelf version of a dump bin, and it's often used for toys that don't have packaging like plush or balls or novelty toys, things that are meant to be handled or played with by the consumer and need easy access, if you will. They're often used for toys that might otherwise you know, roll around or get away or that you really just can't peg. And you'll see these both as impulse buys on cash wraps or as well on shelf in the toy aisle. All right, so wrapping it up, plastic. There are many types of plastic, seven main types of plastic used in American manufacturing, but the two most common plastics for toys is PVC, which is polyvinyl chloride. This is the other one, so excuse me, the other one is um, acrylate butadiene styrene, or ABS. I probably totally butchered that name. So both types of plastics are often used on the same figure. PVC is the softer plastic. ABS is the harder plastic. So for these she figures, the body, the head, the arms are all made of ABS. The uh, cape and the tunic, those are made of PVC because they have to be softer and more flexible and that is how PVC and ABS come together to make a lot of action figures. Softer parts are in PVC, harder parts like the bodies, like the limbs, the heads, are made of ABS. But both are used very, very commonly in the toy industry in order to complete a total figure. All right, did I hit every word that you'd like me to do? If I missed any, leave them in the comments below. Leave me a thumbs up or a subscription because that tells YouTube to share this with other people, and that's the whole point, share toy love. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.